Imagine standing at the edge of a vast, unknown landscape, the future. It's a place where possibilities are limitless, where innovation reigns supreme, and where success is waiting to be claimed by those daring enough to take the leap. But what does it take to make it in this new world? According to Peter Thiel, one of the world's most successful venture capitalists, the key lies in achieving a monopoly, a concept that has long been associated with negative connotations. Yet, Thiel argues that monopolies are not only good for innovation but necessary to succeed in a world where competition is fierce. In his book, Zero to One, Thiel outlines his philosophy on how to create something new, something that can't be copied, and how to go from zero to one. In the following chapters, he provides a roadmap to success, including the three things you should stop doing and the five things you should do to become a successful monopolist. But before we delve into the details of his philosophy, let's take a moment to stand at the edge of the future, to gaze into the unknown, and to wonder what kind of world we could create if we follow Teal's advice. Are you ready to take the leap? Chapter 1. In the year 2100, the world was a vastly different place from what it is today. The cities were taller and wider, and the population had doubled. People moved around in sleek self-driving cars that glided silently through the streets, guided by an advanced GPS system that used satellites to pinpoint their location. The skies were full of super-fast planes that could travel across the globe in a matter of hours, and the oceans were teeming with gigantic submarines that could explore the deepest depths. But despite all this progress, there was a sense of unease among some of the inhabitants of this future world. They felt that they were stuck in a rut, endlessly imitating and copying what had come before, without truly innovating or pushing the boundaries of what was possible. One person who felt this way was a young woman named Lara. She had always been fascinated by the stories of the great inventors and thinkers of the past, people like Thomas Edison, Marie Curie, and Nikola Tesla. But as she looked around at the world of 2100, she felt that something was missing. One day, while browsing through an old bookstore, Lara came across a book by Peter Thiel. The book was called, Zero to One, and it talked about the importance of vertical progress, of creating something entirely new rather than simply copying what had come before. Lara devoured the book, feeling a sense of excitement and inspiration building within her. She realized that if she wanted to make a difference in the world, she needed to stop imitating and start thinking outside established conventions. And so, Lara began to experiment with new ideas and technologies. She spent long hours in her basement workshop, tinkering with strange and unusual devices, trying to come up with something truly revolutionary. At first, Lara's experiments were a bit of a mess. Her inventions were clunky and awkward, and most of them didn't work at all. But she persisted, never giving up on her dream of creating something entirely new. And then, one day, it happened. Lara stumbled upon a breakthrough, a discovery that would change the world forever. She had invented a new kind of energy source, one that was clean, renewable, and incredibly powerful. The world was amazed by Lara's invention. It was unlike anything anyone had ever seen before, a true example of vertical progress. And as Lara stood on the stage at the World Innovation Summit, accepting the prize for her groundbreaking invention, she knew that she had truly made a difference. From that day on, Lara became a beacon of hope for a world that was always looking for something new and exciting. She inspired a whole generation of inventors and thinkers, encouraging them to stop imitating and start thinking outside established conventions. And as the years passed, Lara's legacy lived on, a shining example of the power of vertical progress to change the world for the better. Chapter 2. Sophie had always been a dreamer. She would spend hours daydreaming about her future, imagining all the amazing things she could achieve. But as she grew older, she realized that simply dreaming wasn't enough. She needed to take action to turn her dreams into reality. Sophie had always been interested in technology, and after completing her degree in computer science, she decided to start her own tech company. She spent months researching the market, analyzing trends, and studying the competition. She knew that to succeed, she needed to think outside the box and come up with something truly innovative. After months of brainstorming and ideation, Sophie had an epiphany. 
She realized that the key to success was not just in coming up with a new product or service, but in focusing all her energy and resources on one specific area. She needed to find a niche and master it. Sophie poured all her energy into her startup. She focused on developing one product that was better than anything else on the market. She worked day and night, pouring over lines of code and tweaking designs until everything was perfect. Many people thought Sophie was crazy. They told her that she was wasting her time and that she needed to diversify her portfolio to be successful. But Sophie remained focused. She knew that to achieve her dreams, she needed to stay determined and ignore the naysayers. Finally, the day arrived. Sophie's product was ready, and she was confident that it was the best in the market. She launched her startup with a small team, and the response was overwhelming. People loved her product, and they were willing to pay top dollar for it. Sophie's company grew quickly, and soon she was expanding into new markets and hiring more staff. But she never forgot the lessons she had learned along the way. She knew that success was not just about luck, but about focus and determination. Sophie's story is a reminder that success is not just a matter of luck. It's about having the courage to think outside established conventions, the focus to master one specific area, and the determination to see your dreams through to the end. Chapter 3. In the bustling city of Silicon Valley, there lived a young entrepreneur named Mark. He was passionate about creating new products that would change the world, but he was growing increasingly frustrated with the competitive landscape. No matter how innovative his ideas were, it seemed like there was always another company ready to copy them and undercut his prices. One day, Mark attended a seminar on business strategy, and his world was turned upside down. The speaker talked about the power of monopolies and how they could drive innovation and benefit society as a whole. Mark was skeptical at first. After all, weren't monopolies supposed to be bad for consumers? But as he listened to the speaker's arguments, he began to see the potential benefits. Mark went home that night and started doing his research. He read case studies of successful monopolies like Google and Apple, and began to analyze the factors that had led to their dominance. He realized that the key was to create something new and innovative, something that no one else could copy. Mark threw himself into his work, determined to create a product that would change the world and establish his company as a monopoly. He poured countless hours into research and development, perfecting every aspect of his creation. And when it was finally ready, he launched it with a flourish, confident that it would be a game changer. At first, things didn't go quite as planned. There were other companies that tried to copy Mark's product, and he found himself engaged in a fierce battle for market share. But he was determined to come out on top, and he kept refining his product until it was truly unbeatable. Slowly but surely, Mark's company began to gain traction. Consumers raved about the product's innovative features and unparalleled quality, and soon it became clear that there was no competition. Mark had created a true monopoly. As his company grew, Mark began to see the benefits of his strategy. His company had a technological advantage that no one else could match, and the network effects of his product drew more and more customers every day. He was able to achieve economies of scale that drove down costs and allowed him to offer his product at unbeatable prices. And most importantly, his strong brand had become synonymous with innovation and excellence, making it impossible for anyone else to replicate his success. Mark had proven that it was possible to create a monopoly that benefited everyone, consumers, employees, and investors alike. And as he looked out over the skyline of Silicon Valley, he knew that he had truly changed the world. Chapter 4. Once upon a time, in a bustling city filled with entrepreneurs and dreamers, there was a young woman named Sarah who had always been drawn to the idea of starting her own company. She had a strong work ethic and a passion for innovation, but she couldn't quite put her finger on what it was that made a successful startup. One day, Sarah attended a talk by a famous entrepreneur who had built a highly successful company from scratch. The speaker emphasized the importance of having a unique vision and a team of original thinkers who were not afraid to take risks and think outside the box. Sarah took this message to heart and began her journey of building her own company. She knew that she needed to assemble a team of individuals who were not just skilled in their respective fields, but who also brought their own distinct perspectives to the table. 
She interviewed dozens of candidates before finally finding the perfect group of people who were not afraid to challenge the status quo. They were all a bit quirky and unconventional, but Sarah knew that their differences would ultimately lead to the success of their company. Together, they worked tirelessly to develop a product that was truly unique and unlike anything on the market. But as they began to gain traction and grow their customer base, Sarah started to feel the pressure of the competition. She began to second-guess her vision and wondered if she should conform to the industry standards in order to appeal to a broader audience. But then, she remembered the words of the entrepreneur who had inspired her. She realized that in order to truly succeed, she needed to stick to her original vision and stay true to the values that her company was founded on. With renewed confidence, Sarah and her team pushed forward, continuing to innovate and create. And just like Steve Jobs and his iconic iPod, Sarah's company soon became a household name, revolutionizing their industry and proving that originality and vision were truly the secret sauce to startup success. Chapter 5. In a bustling city filled with high-tech companies, a young entrepreneur named Jane was struggling to get her startup off the ground. She had a brilliant idea for a new product, but she knew that in order to succeed in such a competitive market, she needed to have a secret. Something that her competitors didn't have, something that would set her apart from the rest. Jane spent months researching and experimenting, trying to find that elusive secret that would give her startup the edge it needed. Finally, she stumbled upon a new technology that could revolutionize her industry. She poured all her resources into developing this new technology and integrating it into her product. At first, Jane's competitors didn't take her seriously. They thought her product was just another entry in a crowded market. But when they saw the power of Jane's secret technology, they knew they were in trouble. Soon, Jane's startup was the talk of the town. Investors were knocking down her door, and customers were clamoring to get their hands on her innovative product. As Jane's company grew, she realized that her secret wasn't just about the technology. It was about the passion and determination that drove her to find it. She knew that without that drive, she would never have discovered the secret that made her startup successful. Years later, Jane's startup had become a major player in the industry, and she was hailed as a visionary entrepreneur. But she never forgot the importance of having a secret. She continued to innovate and push the boundaries of what was possible, always searching for the next big thing that would keep her startup ahead of the curve. In the end, Jane knew that the key to success was never giving up, even when the odds were against her. She knew that with enough determination and the right secret, anything was possible. And she was living proof that sometimes, the greatest secrets are the ones that you discover within yourself. Chapter 6. Sam had a passion for technology and dreamed of starting his own company. He had an idea for a new app that he believed could change the world, but he knew it would take time and persistence to bring it to fruition. Sam started small, working on his app in his spare time while still holding down a day job. He poured all of his energy and resources into developing his product, even though he knew he wouldn't make any profits in the beginning. At times, it was tough. Sam faced rejection from investors who didn't see the potential in his idea, and he struggled to balance his day job with his entrepreneurial endeavors. But he persevered, knowing that success wasn't going to happen overnight. Years went by, and Sam's app slowly but steadily gained popularity. He continued to refine and improve the product, always looking for ways to make it better. And finally, after years of hard work and persistence, Sam's app became a household name. People were amazed at how Sam had single-handedly disrupted an entire industry, and he was lauded as a visionary entrepreneur. But for Sam, it was simply the culmination of years of hard work and dedication. The moral of Sam's story is that success doesn't come easy. It takes time, effort, and persistence to turn a great idea into a profitable business. But with hard work and determination, anything is possible. So, if you have a dream, don't give up on it. Keep pushing forward, and who knows where it might take you. Chapter 7. Imagine you're a budding entrepreneur, eager to start your own company. You've done your research, crunched the numbers, and are confident in your ability to create a product that people will love. However, you know that success is not just about having a great product, it's also about having a strong team and culture. 
You've read stories about companies like PayPal, where the team was so close that they went on to start new companies together. You understand that personal connections and strong relationships are critical to building a successful company. You also know that conflicts can arise when different interests come into play, such as the founder's desire to develop their products patiently versus the board of directors' goal to bring in profits quickly. You understand the importance of defining a way to resolve these conflicts early on. As you prepare to build your team, you're not just looking for individuals with the right skills and vision, but also people who share your values and can build strong personal connections. You're willing to put in the time and effort required to create a strong culture, knowing that it will be the foundation for your company's success. You know that company culture is not just about perks like a pool table or a soda machine. It's about creating a work environment where everyone feels valued and supported, and where there's mutual understanding and trust. You're committed to building such a culture and believe that it will be the key to your company's long-term success. Meet Jake, a young entrepreneur who wanted to start his own business in the technology industry. Jake had always been fascinated by technology, and he knew that there were countless opportunities in the market waiting for him to seize them. However, he didn't want to be another victim of the investment bubble that had taken down so many other startups. Before starting his business, Jake read a checklist of questions that would help him ensure his success. He knew that the checklist was created by Silicon Valley experts who had learned from their own mistakes, and he didn't want to repeat them. Jake's first concern was whether he could create a true technological breakthrough. He wanted his product to be innovative, and he knew that it was the key to standing out from the competition. After doing his research and brainstorming with his team, he was confident that he had something truly unique. The second question on the checklist was whether it was the right time to start his business. Jake analyzed the market trends and found that there was a growing demand for his product. He realized that the timing was perfect. The third question was whether he would start with a large share of a small market. Jake didn't want to compete with established companies right away. Instead, he decided to focus on a niche market where he could build a loyal customer base and gradually expand his business. The fourth question on the checklist was whether his team could pursue this opportunity. Jake knew that he couldn't do it alone, so he recruited a team of skilled and motivated individuals who shared his vision. The fifth question was how he would deliver his product to customers. Jake knew that distribution was crucial, and he decided to use a combination of traditional advertising and viral marketing to reach his target audience. The sixth question was whether he could still defend his market position in 10 or 20 years. Jake knew that the technology industry was constantly evolving, so he made sure that his product was adaptable and future-proof. The final question was whether he saw a unique opportunity that others had missed. Jake was confident that he had identified a gap in the market and that his product was the solution to a problem that had yet to be solved. With his checklist completed, Jake was ready to launch his business. He knew that there were no guarantees in the world of entrepreneurship, but he was confident that he had done everything he could to ensure his success. And with hard work, dedication, and a bit of luck, he knew that he would make his mark in the industry. Finally, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading Zero to One were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.